he had a very strong center of himself. And I think he felt if everyone cultivated their, the strength of their core center of themselves, it, then it can be better for everyone. And nobody can do that for you. You have to do it yourself. And, but he in himself, and also because he was pre-World War II generation, he had pretty good training from his family about self-discipline and that kind of young training to be able to, um, you know, contr not control is not a good word, but um, uh, to have that kind of discipline with yourself just really makes your life really strong and gets you through a lot of things. So I feel that was something about him that people who met him felt right away. Like he wasn't easily swayed from his center point. Something like this he might have called Journey in Space or he had great titles. Uh, so uh, <laughs> it's funny because he teaches painting but he encourages people um, to learn about, for instance, since he's Japanese, he's trained in both Eastern and Western art forms. So if we're painting watercolor, he encouraged us to learn about Japanese calligraphy because that really teaches you a lot about the brush. And then you can take that knowledge back to watercolor painting and be much more aware of your brush as a tool. And also calligraphy focuses your mind really well. I always wish that people could still meet him, but I feel like in a way they can by coming here. I mean, I think you get some feeling of him here and visiting his tree. I feel like you get a feeling from him because that's a park he loved. And even his tree itself with the haiku presents something. And um, I just really hope, you know, because I feel like he affected so many people's lives in so many ways that I hope that kind of philosophy he was presenting can stay alive for future generations. So hoping, you know, even past my generation that um, there can be somewhere people can go to see his art and learn about things he said and did, and that will be great. <laughs>